So welcome to the ASIFR flight for from Jeremiah Denton to Stennis International. Let's get into the weather. And I'll, as always, I'll try to take it, not here, but from the website. Um, this is for 19 Zulu. And we can see around us there are some convective uh, systems and SIGMETs. Um, one and the, the other, both are valid till uh, 20 Zulu, basically. Uh, we should be just skirting it. I believe we would be safe. Even if I zoom out, it seems that like clouds are actually uh, avoiding us. But there is a there is a risk that you know some of them will come will come forward for us. Uh, if I check the winds, we uh, will check. This is quite manageable, 10 or 15 knots. The same for 3,000 feet, 10 knot winds. At surface, we might have some gusts, especially at our destination. Uh, currently in the simulator the wind blows uh, almost uh, directly down the runway 1-2 so it should be quite uh, all right uh, we don't need any uh, any uh, like difficulties with crosswinds takeoffs and landings um, this is a turbulence it seems that uh, we can expect at least light turbulence uh, flying you know at 3000 or 6000 that's a very um, very uh, kind of um, expected with th thunderstorms in the area. If I look at the METARs, uh, the, this is like the METAR of the nearby airport. Uh, you can see that the clouds are quite fine. There are some broken layer at 4200, so that's our ceiling. We have standard pressure more or less. The destination meter just now was a broken layer of 3,000 feet. Uh, that kind of also agrees with the temperature spread, which is a 29 uh, Zulu to 21 uh, dew point. At 3,000 feet, it might be around uh, 23 or 21 um, degrees. Uh, TAFs, uh, we don't have any TAFs for our departure and arrival. But uh, we have a TAS for uh, GPT, and don't confuse that with the um, AI chat. This is the airport here. Uh, it's halfway uh, between Jeremiah and Stennis. And the temporary TAF from 20 to 22 uh, calls for some uh, thunderstorms and rain with mist, a broken layer of clouds, like. Um, worsen visibility. Uh, we should probably be on the ground before that, but in case we are not, then just uh, take it into uh, consideration that there must there might be something uh, something there. Uh, if I introduce uh, our two airports today, um, this is the departure Jeremiah Denton, very small uh, airfield, three thousand feet long runway. Um, there are some uh, displaced thresholds, so we uh, cannot use all of it for landing, but we can use it for uh, takeoff. Um, destination is Tennis International. It has a runway 18 and 36. Uh, the winds are predicted from uh, like blowing from from the south uh, east at this point, so we can expect uh, some some crosswinds uh, probably. Uh, the departure today we are doing a VFR departure, uh, so we we can file our IFR plan uh, beforehand and activate it in the air. If we don't have any controller, then it will um, make no difference actually. Uh, but if we had one, we could just file a flight plan, and once in the air, uh, we would use these above uh, examples how to contact them and. Um, and ask for a ask for IFR clearance. Uh, important note is to maintain VFR until you have that clearance. You are not allowed to go into cloud unless you already have a clearance and you are a positive radar contact. Okay, we have only matadors here today in the briefing, so I'll uh, not spend uh, any more time on it. Uh, you are, of course, uh, welcome to ask questions if something is not clear. 
the arrival. Uh, today I picked um, NDB arrival for myself. It's not that common, uh, especially the NDB arrival that um, is for a specific runway. So uh, we'll do that. Um, what is important to note here? Uh, the Gulf port VOR is on our way, so we can start the approach from this point because the uh, arrow has an MEA course and distance published, so this is a flyable segment. These zigzag lines means that this is not not in uh, not to scale, so it's not that close. It's probably farther away. It's 20 miles. So we would start our approach from Gulfport. We would uh, fly uh, to uh, 200, uh, sorry, 276 uh, track all the way to NDB. Then we would make a right turn and we would try track the QDR of, um, of uh, 001. Like we would um, tr try to track 001 and fly away from the NDB for the procedure turn. We should stay within 50 nautical miles. You can make it closer. Uh, this is only one of the ways how you can perform this procedure turn. So you can uh, turn left 45 degrees and then either turn left or right, you know, 180 and rejoin the course. Or you can do uh, some like continuous turn, like maybe turn like perpendicular or 80 degrees and just then make a turn all the way back in or whatever other shenanigan you want to do. The important thing is to stay within 15 nautical miles and above 1,800 feet. Um, if there are some restricted, restricted areas here, Bravo and Echo is the important one for this. If they are active, then uh, this procedure is uh, not available. Uh, we are on VATSIM, so we don't consider this to be active. Uh, another important thing is when local altimeter settings is not received, and when I checked in the morning, there was no uh, no METAR published for this airport. So I would need to use Gulfport uh, altimeter and increase all the MDAs by 60 feet. So it would not be 600 for me, it would be 660. So when I co complete the procedure turn and I am on the final course, that's the point where I can start descending to 1,600 feet. When I pass the NDB, I can of course descend lower. Now, uh, maybe a question for people that already passed um, P2 test, but feel you know everyone feel free to answer. How do I recognize my missed approach point on this approach? It doesn't have a missed approach point, it has an MDA. It has an NDA, yes. So uh, when do I uh, when do I commence the missed approach? When well, I, I reached an MDA? Well, I haven't passed the P2 yet, but I'd say if I have reached the MDA and I cannot see the field. Mm -hmm. So let's say that um, you reach the MDA uh, it's just 4.3 miles, so it's very low risk that you would uh, like reach that MDA too soon. But let's say you reach it like still three miles from the runway. Do you immediately go around or go missed when you reach an MDA? I can't <clears throat> descend below the MDA. You cannot descend below MDA, that's correct. You need to mm. descend to it and hold MDA. I believe you'd stay at 1,600 feet until you uh, cross the threshold of the runway. 1,600? No, no. The MDA is 600. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah, well, but how do you know that you cross the threshold of the runway if you are in the cloud? I guess you'd have to time it. Exactly. So, uh, missed approach point on these non-precision approaches is often uh, determined by timing. So when you when you uh, pass the final approach fix, you start the timer and according to your ground speed, if you can determine your ground speed, uh, you, you uh, time it. And when you reach that time, 
and you don't see the runway environment and you're like holding at 600 feet you uh, execute a missed approach procedure okay missed approach procedure in this case is a climbing left turn to 1800 feet and direct uh, hanko and db and hold there this calls for um, who can tell me if if we were doing it like this what kind of entry procedure would be used another question i'm thinking direct or uh, parallel I would do a teardrop. Okay. But parallel would probably work as well. It's usually this line that determines, you know, if you are coming from here, it would be parallel. If you are coming from here, it would be teardrop. But, you know, if you from here execute it parallel, then, you know, uh, you will still say, stay on the uh, protected side of the holding pattern. So good enough. Okay, uh, the descent angle here is 3.12 uh, degrees. Uh, we already work with the descent table um, in some of the previous flights. Uh, this will tell you what, uh, what um, uh, feet per minute descent you need to maintain uh, at certain speeds. So if my ground speed is, for example, 90 knots, and I need to maintain 3.12 descent angle, that means I need to maintain roughly 500 feet uh, per minute uh, descent. All right. Okay. Um, the weather should be quite all right for us to see the visual uh, of the runway, but this is the procedure how how we plan it. Uh, I'm planning to plan, uh, sorry, a park at Gulf Coast Aviation, which is here at this apron. So. Uh, land and exit, uh, vacate, and then uh, go there. So what about, yeah, route planning then? Route planning today, um, as for the route itself, I just uh, file GPT VOR. This is the uh, like uh, start of the feeder route for my NDB approach. And there is basically no airway that would bring me, you know, from here to there. And the Oroka is 2,900 feet in this area. So if I'm keeping above that, I should be quite safe. Uh, there is a question if I would be able to receive this VOR signal. You know, it's not guaranteed because I'm not on an airway. Uh, in simulator, I'm quite confident I will receive that signal. Uh, maybe depends. This is a, this is a VOR that is uh, low. So it might be only like 40 nautical miles in the sim. We'll see how that how that plays out. Some portion of the flight should be possible to do like a VFR along the coast or along the islands. So I'm not uh, overly concerned about about this. Uh, alternate. Uh, do we need an alternate? What do you think? Let's review. Not this one. Let's review. Um, Let's say TAF for uh, for um, uh, GPT airport. If we were to base it on this one, can you tell me if we need an alternate and why? Yes or why not? If we make it before nineteen Zulu, then I'd say no, we don't need an alternate. Why nineteen, the... why nineteen Zulu? Because it's uh, it has to be uh, within an hour. Uh, wait before and after departure. Mm, okay, just we okay. need to consider the, the temporary one. Uh -huh. Okay, um, nineteen Zulu is in thirteen minutes. Uh, that's right. I'm off by an hour for some reason. <laughs> so I guess we uh, need to. Mm. Well, so you think we need an alternate? All right. Any I other? do know, yes. <laughs> okay. Any other opinions? I'm thinking that we do not need an alternate uh, because our destination is forecast to be uh, better than three miles visibility, 2,000 feet, an hour before and an hour after our arrival. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, so technically we do not need an alternate because the visibility is greater than three statute miles and the uh, forecast ceiling is greater than 2000 feet. However, this is not the TAA for our destination. And even if it was, it's kind of already skirting those limits. So an alternate might be a good idea. I will actually use the GPT as my alternate here. And I don't know why I forgot to, well, I did it. So I'm using GPT as an alternate. Um, for that, I definitely should, and I didn't, verify if it's legal here. So let's say that I'm thinking that this runway, runway uh, 14, would be used. So let's say, does it have any good approach? Runway 14. I will be using. Um, I will be using. Um, will be using a slant alpha aircraft. So let's say maybe VOR runway 4, 14, 14. Okay, alternate is alt, uh, like um, alt, uh, not alternate, alternate, uh, non standard alternate. So I should go uh, here to the alternate minimums, find out a uh, Gulf port. Let's see. So ILS, blah, blah, VOR, uh, Yankee, runway 14, it's number seven. Number seven, category C and D have uh, like uh, adjusted alternates. I'm category B, so it doesn't concern me and I have standard alternates. That means uh, I can file that alternate if the predicted or forecast ceiling is at least 800 feet uh, HEL uh, for a non-precision and two statute miles of visibility. If I would be class uh, Charlie, uh, like class C aircraft, uh, that visibility would go to two, two miles and a quarter. Is that clear how this works? I think so, yes. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that's the route planning. Of course, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, a few, uh, sorry, um, route planning. Um, you should prepare your time and route and do some fuel calculations as always so you have enough fuel remember 45 minutes is uh, the minimum of extra fuel that you need to pack uh, in addition to your route fuel and uh, the diversion fuel um, just a quick reminder about the en route and arrival. Uh, if uh, we have an ATC, it is good to actively contact them with the approach request, preferably before reaching the Gulf port. And the call um, should also, if, if you don't want any confusions and you want to, um, you know, not clutter the uh, radio waves unnecessarily, then uh, you can say uh, at already at the request that you request uh, like full approach and from where. Then this is a towered airport, so you would be cleared uh, to the approach uh, like something like this, cross probably GPT at or above 1800, cleared NDB runway 1A approach. That doesn't mean that you need to cross GPT at 1800. Uh, as a matter of fact, if multiple of us are flying this approach, it would be prudent not to start descending too soon. So I would probably fly at 3000 over here, over Gulfport. And when I join here, I would maybe descend to, let's say 2500. And when doing that procedure turn, I would only then descend to 1600. I would have enough time to descend there before the NDB. So just stay a little bit higher on this leg if you know there are multiple aircraft coming. Uh, the in, in real life, nobody would clear two aircraft at the same full approach when one is flying you know, north and the other is just turning around and flying to, uh, south. Uh, but uh, here we can we can play it like that. Or they would be st uh, they would be tall, they would be vectored probably, and staying you know above three thousand until you know the procedure turn is finished or something like that. All right. Um, again, the same uh, applies if you are cleared for the approach before your first fix. 
and you start descending already before reaching that, you should advise ATC that you have started this descent. If you are already at the published uh, published approach path, uh, then and you have been cleared for the approach, you don't need to announce this uh, leaving of your altitude and descending. But first, let's do some circuits. And I prepared this uh, very elaborate um, slide, let's say, hoping that we would be uh, we would be having some newbies here, you know, uh, describing how the pattern should look like, what calls are to be made. Uh, but I guess that I don't need to uh, I don't need to describe that to you, um, do I? Or is there someone who wants me to uh, go through it? What do you mean flaps one? Flaps one. I mean like flaps. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's a, that's actually a good question because, for example, I don't have flaps one. I have flaps fifteen. Oh. Uh, so and you also don't have flaps one. You have flaps ten, right? But sometimes it's like uh, it's like um, abbreviated of flaps one. That means like first position and second position and third position. I believe, for example, Airbus. Does Airbus have just one, two, and three? I believe so. They don't have like concrete numbers like Boeing has, right? So uh, yeah. So this is just um, this is just to make it easier, you know, to call those. But every aircraft has you know different settings for the first flaps and second flaps. For example, I have like first flaps are 15 and the second is 35, and I don't have any third position like third extended position so yeah so uh, here it is like just to mention you know first notch second notch and so on of course so uh, my joke yeah my joke turned into a teaching lesson yeah. well done sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> by the way what, when we are at the flaps you know uh, what does it actually mean that you have flaps 10 what, what does 10 degrees mean you know why 10 degrees is it like the degrees that the flap uh, flap like go oh, ten degrees down compared to the rest of the wing, or how is it? Yeah, I think it's ten. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's ten degrees with reference to the cord line of the wing. What about you, Klaus? What did you? What did yeah, you say? I would I would agree with Eugene, but I have a feeling that it's a trick question. <laughs> uh, Eugene is actually yeah. correct. Yeah. So you have a cord line that connects the kind of those two, uh, that like the um, uh, leading edge and trailing edge of the wing. And this is a cord line. If you extend flaps, then you have a new cord line, again from the leading edge to the uh, trailing edge. And the angle it uh, it holds, you know, between that original cord line and with the flaps, is actually the position. So flaps ten would be like that. I see. Yeah, uh, usually we don't need to land with uh, you know full flaps, especially when there is like higher wind, like uh, there is today. I believe we have like 10, 14 knots actually. So um, we don't need to use full flaps uh, because um, our ground speed will be lower. Uh, and we use that on shorter runway. So I will consider this shorter run runway and in my aircraft, I will definitely use like the full flaps here. Because it's very, um, you know, I'm doing like 100 knots at my as my final approach speed, so I'm not doing like 50 like you guys or 55. So um, I will use full flaps. You can survive very well with uh, just uh, two two notches of flaps. Question. Yes. Uh, a left downwind departure. I don't think I have. Uh, seen anything official about that maneuver no at untowered fields you should not do uh, left down in departures but it basically just means that you uh, extend your downwind yeah it, until it, you it means that tunnel. i i don't know why it's not recommended honestly because i personally don't think there would be anything unsafe maybe just the stuff that if you are keeping at 1000 feet in the pattern and only start climbing, you know, when you are away from the pattern, that may be yes. But many people would just continue climbing. And what happens when you, you know, continue climbing through here at higher altitude? Yeah. There might be other aircraft. Over. 
Yes. So I believe that's that might be the reason uh, for that. I will be doing a left crosswind departure today. Uh, you know when I decide to to leave the pattern. Uh, one more question with the route planning because I'm starting to have doubts about mm. my route. <laughs> I was uh, originally planning to go VFR along the coastline mm -hmm. to to GPT and then go okay. IFR from there. Okay. Um, the reason I did that is because I I wanted to pick the RNF one eight. Okay. To uh, and okay. the in, it's within thirty miles of the initial approach fix. I just wanted to, to ask: Is that allowed? Is it even allowed? Like it's not even an actual okay. route. So like go VFR sure. to to some point, and that's the only point of the IFR route, and then go go to an approach straight away. So I, I, uh, I yeah, even... and the VOR is within those uh, thirty nautical miles. Uh, un, un, unless I misclicked. Yes, twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. Uh, more, more, most likely, you would file it, uh, your, or you would activate that flight plan, you know, before flying over GPT, right? Yeah. So I don't see any reason why not. You know, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, you are correct. There is, there is the um, TAA here, 30 nautical miles to Stan. You would be arriving at Stan from this direction, so there is a procedure turn for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, but otherwise, it looks uh, very much like the uh, very much like the uh, NDP approach, just the different um, different aids. Uh, when we are at it, this four nautical miles here, you know, for the procedure turn, it does not uh, make any difference. You know, you, if you fly normally, you just join the course and fly. Uh, but in case you need to hold here, this is actually not bounding. You know, you can make those legs shorter. This is just the limit that you can use. Um, it was actually published by uh, FAA as an explanation of their rules that nothing prevents you to fly one minute patterns here. If you are a slow aircraft, you know, there is no, uh, not any reason to be in the hold, you know, for three minutes on the, in this leg, for example. So you can do standard one minute. This is just the, this is just the limit. So I would request, uh, I would contact ATC like, I don't know, two, three minutes away from GPT. I would I would do that sooner because you need IFR clearance, you know, read that back, you need to be radar contact, you need to request an approach. So um, yeah. I I would do it a little bit sooner. Or you don't file, you know, GPT as your route, or you file a, a G, like a GPT and ten as well. And then you know, um, Mm -hmm. Or you file just GPT and do it three miles away. I, I I don't know if it really matters because at that point you would be in the approach segment anyway, and they would ask you about the approach anyway. So yeah, yeah. What I filed is uh, I filed a VFR plan, and then I just for the route I just put in coastline GPT and then IFR. I hope that gets the. Okay, course. so you have you have filed uh, VFR flight plan, not IFR one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have actually filed IFR flight plan uh, because uh, you can fly VFR without the flight plan and you just activate it, you know, afterwards. But yeah, it's um, whatever whatever works for you. There's no rule, no real rule, I guess. Both, both is fine. Okay, thanks. All right. So unless there are any more questions, I wish you happy flying. I know that all of us will uh, go flying today, so I won't advertise myself too much. <laughs> happy flying. Happy flying. All right. All right. Happy flying. Okay, and here we are in the aircraft. So let's start it up. Clear prop. Okay. There are lights there.
Pumps go in. Engine, uh, engines are running. We'll go in and um, tune that VOR. GPT-1. Use. 109.0 GPT, very good. Switch my DME also to that. We'll also tune in my NDB already. 221. It's gonna be here. I'm not gonna get it yet. I'm on Unicom. I'm squawking VFR at this point. We don't have any uh, controller. Still keeping this one. Uh, the altimeter setting. I don't have a current one, but this airport is at uh, is at five. F uh, is it 50 November feet? six five two nine Lima radio check. Five feet. Well, okay. Papa. Thank you. Okay. So we are at five feet here. Boy, well, there's one uh, Jeremiah against the traffic. It comes in hot speed over past about 500 feet. Okay, I didn't understand a thing. <laughs> okay, let's check here aircraft around us. Okay, we have F eighteen. Okay, so we have F eighteen over us. That was this. <laughs> I believe it's the same guy as, as last time, you know, or not last time, but when we were over Key West. <laughs> yeah, it did sound a bit like the uh, same guy. Yeah, it sounds like a kid, so yeah. Okay, that would be, that would be funny. Let's, let's go. <laughs> Boy, it was one declaring an emergency. I'm going to be landing at Dawson <laughs> Island Airport uh, from an emergency aircraft came down about it. Three mile final. Oh, he's he's having fun. Oh yeah. Hoffman <laughs> <laughs> Island traffic. Yeah. Land drove one emergency aircraft. He didn't show me an emergency landing sign. He's elbow runway. Traffic plays out. Uh, makes itself known. I don't understand him one word, just his emergency. No. The only Less thing I understand. Half. Is it for us? Here? Let's see. Is there two so. aircraft above us? No, uh, it's just one. Okay, so my little left map is behind. Jeremiah Denton traffic, Oscar Kilo Golf Charlie Romeo Twin Cessna, the apron taxiing to runway uh, 1 2. We'll be backtracking runway 1 2. Jeremiah. I think we'll just do a run up on the, on the apron. Oh, yeah, run up. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, run up is is a good idea, especially when you have failures enabled. Or then myself like so as to <laughs> not blast anyone. Yes. Pon 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 station station station. Landros one aborted landing. 
dog of Nylon Airport due to unstable conditions. To be returned to Jeremiah, right at the aircraft for a few on the needle traffic to abort. I think. Hmm. Eugene, you're American. Do you understand him? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So it's it's but... not it's not my English that's at fault. No, not okay. at all. Okay. Okay. Good. Not keen to hear it. <laughs> at least he doesn't have a media anymore. I guess I'll wait until he passes because he's going over us. Very low altitude. I don't even think you are allowed to like declare emergencies on Unicorn with no controller around. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Right. Guess yeah. let me have some fun. But yeah. <laughs> it's actually coming in here. Like, can you have, can't you have fun elsewhere? <laughs> like where I'm not. <laughs> oh no, he's climbing. Um, oh well. Okay. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogol of Charlie Romeo, entering runway 12 and backtracking runway 12. Jeremiah. Cancel your inbound traffic, I'm going to hurt this aircraft to climb one mile plan. Yeah, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's against the code of conduct of VATSIM to declare emergencies on Unicom, right? Oh, that's one fast Cessna. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. Where was I? He has no chance of landing here, you know, uh, with that bird, I believe. <laughs> yeah, unless you have like like the the lines to catch the aircraft like they have in the carriers, maybe then. <laughs> But... And he disconnected. There you go. <laughs> Maybe you uh, scared him, Tomas. Well, I just cited code of conduct as, uh, as uh, <laughs> I've been reminded. So. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> Jeremiah Denton traffic, Oscar Kilogol of Charlie Romeo at runway 12, taking off, uh, remaining uh, in a left close traffic. Jeremiah. I hear myself back from one of you. No idea, that's not. Jeremiah traffic, November 236 Echo, time 1 to Jeremiah. Very nice takeoff. Jeremiah traffic, volume 36 Echo, entering the back tracking on the 1 to Jeremiah. Uh, but I got away from here quick before the big bad Cessna returns. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a bad day today. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogov, of Charlie Romeo, turning left, crosswind, runway 1 to Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogov, Charlie Romeo, a turning left uh, downwind, runway 1 to Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, 901 power Charlie, texting to one day 1 2, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, departing one day 1 2, and fly close. 
Well, if anything, I can go do go arounds, right? If they are aircraft in the traffic pattern uh, on the runway. Oh, it's fine. For now, it's fine. Yeah, but I need to practice go arounds as well, so. <laughs> it's a very. Well, in that strange. case. Jeremiah traffic, 91 power Charlie, entering runway 12 for backtracking Jeremiah. Oh, you devil. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah what? traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, turning uh, left base runway 12, Jeremiah. You can still make it. Maybe. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, turning left, Coughlin, runway 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, turning final, runway 12, uh, touch and go, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, I see the traffic on the runway, we'll be doing a go around, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, traffic, Gloria 36 Echo, turning left downwind, runway 12, Jeremiah. I'm coming for you. No! <laughs> I'm too low again. I need to really practice on that. Yeah, me too. So I have the P1 already. Overshot the turn. Oh, license revoked. Oh, jeez. Jeremiah Traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, uh, going around, runway 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, 911 power Charlie taking off on way 12 for left close traffic, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo turning left crosswind on way 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo turning left back on way 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogol of Charlie Romeo, turning left downwind runway 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, turning final runway 12, touch and go, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, one power Charlie, turning left crosswind 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, one power Charlie, turning left, downwind, runway 12, Jeremiah. I'm also getting some feedback from one of you, I think, on Discord. 
<clears throat> Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogram, Charlie Romeo, turning left way is runway one to Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, turning final, runway 1-2, touch and go, Jeremiah. Alright, I'll wait for you, Tomas, and then I'll try to back taxi. Jeremiah traffic, Romeo 26 Echo, turning left, cross wind, runway 1-2, Jeremiah. Oh, there is somebody on final. Who that is? Yeah. Oh. You're okay. right behind him. But is it one of us? I don't think so. I haven't heard any calls. No, no it's uh, somebody doing shenanigans, I think. Yeah, I believe it's the same guy as before. <laughs> it just crashed on the runway. <laughs> Jeremiah, traffic, Gloria 36 Echo, turning left downwind on the 1 2, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, going around runway 1 2. I believe someone needs to wall up that guy. Jeremiah traffic, one ball Charlie turning final, one way one two, touch and go, Jeremiah. There's no call whatsoever, right? I'm not hearing anything. No, I wasn't downwind when I noticed uh, you and him were very close, so I was also curious who was that on final. Yeah, I turned final and then I saw him. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo turning left, crosswind runway 1 to Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, November 6th, final Lima, back taxi and runway 1 to Jeremiah. He's still on the runway, right? Well, kids will be kids, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremiah, traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, turning left back from the 1 2, Jeremiah. You just fly through him, I guess. Uh, yeah. I went around again. Jeremiah, traffic, was correct, Kilogram of Child, Jeremiah, turning left, downwind runway 1 2, Jeremiah. I would like to do at least one touch and go. <laughs> In two Jeremiah, traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, turning final, runway 1 2, touch and go, Jeremiah. I'm back taxiing on the grass. Try to stay out of your way a little bit. Nice landing. Still someone on the runway. Oh well, go around for me. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, going around runway 1 2, closed left traffic. Jeremiah. I just took off so you could have made it. Jeremiah traffic, uh, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, turning left base, runway 1 2, Jeremiah. Looks like he's flying some kind of jet. Business jet. Yeah. Jet. Yeah.
Jerry Mine traffic, goes car kilo golf channel Romeo, turning final runway one two, touch and go, then left close traffic, Jerry Mine. Jeremiah traffic, one power charge, turning left crosswind for one two, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 echo, turning left crosswind, one nine one two, behind the Cessna 152, Jeremiah. See if I can actually keep track of you. Traffic one for Charlie turning left downwind to a one two Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic November six five two nine Lima depart runway one two Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, turning left on Zend behind the 152, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogov, Charlie Romeo, turning left crosswind, runway 12, Jeremiah. Traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, I've lost sight of the 152, making a right 360 for population, Jeremiah. Jeremiah Traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, turning left, downwind, runway 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah Traffic, November 6529, Lima, turn left, crosswind, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, one power charge, turn left base, one two, Jeremiah. Oh, so the arrow dis dis disengaged from the traffic pattern. Uh, what's me? I'm in, in the warrior. I oh, warrior. couldn't see Klaus anymore, so I'm at uh, a right 360. Okay, yeah, warrior, sorry. I see you as an arrow because I don't have a warrior. Oh, okay. Clear my traffic, one power child and final, one day one two, touch and go. Uh, I can see you approaching the. And there's a conflict. Okay, great. <laughs> Just. Jeremiah traffic in room 6529 Lima, downwind runway 3T, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic with Scar Kilogram of Charlie Romeo, turning left base from way 1 2, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, rejoining the left downwind runway 1 2, behind the traffic, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, turning final, runway 1 2, touch and go, and then we'll leave the pattern uh, via left crosswind uh, departure. Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, November 6529, Lima, turn left base, runway 12, Jeremiah. 
Okay, now traffic for your 36 echo turning left base, runway 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, November 6, 29 Lima, turning final runway 312, Jeremiah. My traffic, one power Charlie, turning left crosswind, one way, one two, Jeremiah. Jeremiah um, traffic, Rider 36 Echo, turning final runway 1 2, touch and go, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, one bar John is heading left downwind 1 2, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Oscar Kilo Golf, Charlie Romeo, uh, leaving the pattern, currently 1,700 feet, climbing 4,000. We'll be circling the airport for a while at, uh, yep, at altitude. Hi, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, one power Charlie, turning left base, runway one, one two, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, one ball, Johnny turning final, one way, one, two, touch and go, Jeremiah. Nice area to do pattern work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah, traffic for your 36 Echo, turning left crosswind from the 1 2, Jeremiah. Okay, this time I'll have a decent pattern for sure. <laughs> Any second now. <laughs> So admit it, when was the last time that you actually did, you know, some serious pattern work? When was my P1? Uh, I guess at the a year ago, I think. Really? Okay. I occasionally fly patterns, you know, just to stay sharp. Jeremiah traffic for your 36 echo turning left downwind on the one two Jeremiah. Yeah, I probably should do that as well. And it sounds like a chore, right? Well, actually, I uh, I have to correct myself when I when I got the uh, the Kodiak 
I did a lot of patterns in the Kodiak because I really couldn't fly to save my life. So out of injured pride, I guess I went back to pattern training. Mm -hmm. Well, some clouds are rolling in the area, as I can see. At least at this altitude, I'm at. I'm at 2,000 right now. Jeremiah traffic, 914 Charlie, doing a lift crosswind departure to leave the pattern. Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Roger 36 Echo, turning left base, runway 12, Jeremiah. <coughs> Yeah, there are so many skills to practice, but so little time to practice. <laughs> yeah, you just have to stop playing that outside game. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Winter is coming. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremiah traffic, uh, Warrior 36 Echo, turning final on the 1 2, touch and go, and then a left crosswind departure, Jeremiah. Yeah, honestly, I. I I played outside all weekend and now my everything hurts, so I guess outside sucks. Jeremiah Traffic, 91 Bow Charlie has uh, left the traffic pattern to the east at 1,500 feet and will be turning west. Final call, Jeremiah. Alright, so uh, we're starting to um, track the inbound radio for a Gulf port uh, VOR. Yep, figured for zero good patterns today. <laughs> oh, jeez. Don't be so harsh on yourself. <laughs> Yeah. Um. Jeremiah traffic, November six five two nine Lima is leaving the traffic pattern to the west at 2,000 feet, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, turning left crosswind, runway 12, Jeremiah. Jeremiah traffic, Warrior 36 Echo, left crosswind, runway 12, clear off the pattern, climbing 2000, departing west, final call, Jeremiah.
we are four ones flying with the wind, right? Finally. Yeah. I don't have much tur turbulence today. It's rather smooth. Yeah. Yeah. I am still not picking up the AI VOR. Which one? AI, the artificial intelligence. Oh, oh I've I've picked it up like almost immediately when take when uh, in the air. Ah. Check the frequency. One zero nine. That's zero. Yes. One zero nine zero. I got nothing. What aircraft are you flying? 152. Check that the circuit breaker is in, you know, in the navigation. The navigation. Uh, it, it is. Uh, I'm getting a reading on my Ward 2 on 115 decimal 3. Uh -huh. That and must if, have been from last week. Okay, and if you tune 109 to uh, NAV2, to VOR2. Let me try that. Nothing. Nothing. Hmm. That's strange. That is strange. Yeah. Uh, having the same issue as well. I'm not picking up it up. I only have the uh, GPS distance. 44 miles away still. Do any uh, one of you use uh, Navigraph nav, da nav data in the simulator? Yeah, yeah. I do. Both of you? Mm-hmm. Yep. I think. Huh? Yep. I don't. <laughs> uh, so really... maybe... Okay. I don't either. And do you have the signal, Eugene? Um, let me try to pick it up. I'm trying to pick up that NDB, is that correct? Yeah, but uh, actually GPT VOR. Ah, uh, GPT. What's the issue here? Yeah. One zero nine. Frequency. One zero nine. Okay. So what's the what's the range on the lower altitude? But hmm. would there be a difference in the antenna strength on the airplanes? Mm, no, not in the simulator. Maybe the Navigraph Nav data actually okay. reduce the ranges of the VORs. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I have it now. I'm 40 miles out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I yeah. had it. I'll... Yeah. What about I you? I also Eugene? have it. And how far are you? Uh, let's see. I am. 34 miles. 34, okay. Well, I had it definitely before being, you know, 40. In the range of 40. I know okay. positively that I was like at 43 when I first checked. So and I... maybe Navigraph is overriding some ranges. Yeah. Well, it provides the whole nav, nav data database, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Exactly as I crossed the 40 mile mark, now I'm picking it up too. Then I think it's confirmed. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, we don't so have a second one that would confirm that it's, you know, um, that it's um, 40 mile plus. Because Eugene well, is really closer. Eugene will have to backtrack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do that if you want. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've seen it before that it pops up at 40 miles, so 
probably no coincidence. Yeah, it must pop up at some distance, and uh, as as we saw that uh, that VR is a low, uh, you know, low gain. Actually, yeah. let me try to find um, what's that? classes of VORs. Terminal, low and high. It's like low altitude is forty miles, yes. <laughs> but that's just uh, a guarantee that's just the guaranteed, you know, um, range. Yeah, it depends on the weather as well. Yeah. Weather equipment and all that. It's just like high. Oh, I believe that this is not correct. Yeah, we need to find it out later. It's uh, very difficult to read and fly at the same time. Mm. Yeah, now? handle the navigation stuff while hand flying is <laughs> a bit of a challenge as well. Oh yeah. Okay, there are also new service volumes. Okay, that looks better. Okay, the new service volumes are actually better. It's a VOR low, VOR high. And then also like standard high, low and terminal. Okay, I still have no ATC, right? No ATC, okay. Nope. So I better mute myself and prepare myself for the NDB approach. See you later. See ya. Uh, good luck. Well, as soon as I brief it, I'll be back, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Andy B approach. Um, there we go. So we already briefed it on the in the briefing. Uh, so um, just very quick recap. I will start it at Gulfport, and I will fly two seven six out of Gulfport, all the way to uh, this uh, Andy B here, Hanko. I already have the signal there. Uh, when I cross it, I will turn right, uh, try to get, well, I don't actually need to get on this, um, on this um, uh, course, uh, 001, I need to, I can stay in a little bit to the uh, west of it here, but I will try to intercept just for practice. Um, then, after flying a little bit, I will just uh, reverse the course and be back fly here when crossing this viewer i will try to be at the uh, final approach configuration already uh, actually with the uh, flaps one at least and uh, will determine my ground speed uh, based on uh, predicted winds i guess so we'll see how that goes So on my ADF card here, I already tuned in 181. Should be like this. Oh, and by coincidence, I'm already have my VOR on a course 277. So it's just gonna be 276. Just one difference when I come closer.
Okay, this should be a GPT obviously, so let's get the current altimeter setting. 2990, so let's change. Oh, okay, should not be changing this. There we go. So we are officially starting the approach here. very close to the VOR so it gets very sensitive I'll just uh, maintain the heading for now until we are on the other side of it now we lost the signal we're over now we get it back and it comes back nice Okay, let's get current weather for our destination this time. Oh, I had... Yeah, 2990. Zero. 2990 one. So I will set that up one. There we go. And I should pay more attention to navigating. So let's make sure I'm on the correct path here. Let's get back on course. Okay. The weather then broken 3000. Uh, winds are from 100. What was the magnetic variation there it 1.5 west so uh, it's uh, very low negligible so it's gonna be quite a strong uh, crosswind to be honest for a low 18 almost well basically all of that component is the is the crosswind so need to uh, we'll need to count with that when we are flying our course inbound and unbound so the wind is coming from a hundred so it, we will be deviating a little bit to the right our track so let's say that our heading will not I will not strive to maintain a one eight one zero one heading but let's say uh, 185. Let's try not to descend too much. Okay, I'm uh, 12 miles from uh, Anko and DB. Still pointing. Uh, let's actually verify we have a correct one.
Yeah. Okay, we have the correct one. We are flying course reversal, so uh, we can as well uh, slow Any down. Any ideas about the around. range and the NDB? I got that NDB also already from the start. Uh, okay. 221. Yeah. But I probably shouldn't have. I don't know. <laughs> I have nothing on that. So I'm gonna enable my my uh, fuel pumps here. And I will slow down. So I will be doing a course reversal, so no need to actually blast at full power there. Let's actually start descending right now. That must be the field we are landing at. Theory, we are visual already, almost. Okay, so now we need to get to that NDP. It's very close. to turn a little bit into the wind. Okay, I will start my timer just to know how far I've flown. I'm doing 140 uh, airspeed here. Maybe just a minute and a half of flying. Okay, 
I will put it to zero zero one. So when I turn on that, let's verify where our NDB is. Okay, directly behind us. That's correct. That's good. Well, not directly. Still a little bit to the right, which is on the safe side. So that's right. It's okay. I can slow down a little bit more. I need to stay above 1800 until I am back on course. But I believe this altitude is actually better for now. Let's slow up. too much okay one minute and a half just reset the timer and let's turn left now I can start descending to 1800 reduced power too much I turn on my landing lights mixture okay let's turn Stennis International Traffic, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, on a NDB approach 18, uh, about 10 miles out. We'll be doing straight in for only 18. Stennis. Okay, so let's see where that NDB is. So if I look here, and now I can descend to 1600, it's slightly to the left, so to go there. Actually, it's okay if it's to the left. I've done this much, it should be less to the left. Send it too much. Let's correct it. Okay, now. Oh, yet. 
25, this is just 20. It doesn't look like a stabilized approach. Still to the left, too much. Right in front of me. Actually, 170 here. If I fly 170, then now it's at the correct position. Okay, so I'm just gonna fly 175. I'll try to keep it there. to the right wind should push me now it's it's at oh, I hit some air current let's do flaps one it went slightly left of the course so let's try to correct Tennis International Traffic, Oscar Kilo Golf Charlie Romeo, a four mile final runway 18 Stennis. And timer. I'm doing about 90 knots, I guess, ground speed, thereabout. So for me, it's approximately three minutes. But I can descend. Let's see, if I fly 175, let's start descending, gear down. 175, then I need to push the tail. I'm going faster. Yeah, it now. It now shows correctly, roughly. Let's see. Okay, I see the runway. So let's transition. The visual. Stennis International, Oscar Kilogolf, Charlie Romeo, uh, three mile final runway 18, full stop landing, Stennis. Flaps uh, 15, I'll stay at flaps 15, there are high winds. Alright. 
Let's point the nose right. up. It was not so bad. The lights off, strobe lights off. Stanis traffic, Oscar Kilo Golf Charlie Romeo, vacated runway 18, uh, taxiing to the parking car. Stanis. Okay, there we go. St oh, on. Alright, supplies are off, that is off. Good. Okay, we have someone coming in. Guys, is someone of you on the final already? No. But no, I'm. Shortly before entering the hold. Yeah, because I see someone, but I have not heard any calls at all. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's me. Let me try again. Yes. Did that come through? No. Huh. Interesting. Have you flown the full NDB or something else? Uh, yeah, I, I came in on the NDB. It's weird how I'm not broadcasting on that, on uh, that soon. Well, my NDB approach was a little bit shaky. <laughs> so was mine. I kind of, kind of hit it, but I've had problems, you know, tracking it correctly. I will need to see the track myself. What happens? What happened? Yeah. I was close, but not perfect. <laughs> Let's try this again. That's weird. Right, it's time to review how we've done. So, I will try to show procedures. First tennis. 
NDB transition GPT procedure turn on course to fix. Okay, so let's try to yep. That would be it. We flew in here. We hit it quite correctly. Then we flew out. Did the procedure turn and then kind of wove our way in. And where is that NDB? There is NDB. Okay, so we were able to finally get on course and then from from there it was quite alright. So the final approach was, was alright. It was just slightly off. This is good. So the biggest problem was actually getting established. I rolled out too soon and I should have continued. We'll need to employ a different technique slightly to able to gauge you know where I am in reference to that but yeah yeah but that was exactly how far what I was can seeing. you overshoot the uh, protected side of a hold asking for a friend um I'm not sure right now exactly how that would be no. uh, but you should stay within uh, 50 nautical miles of that NDB and you should be clear. No, I mean, like, uh, but I think it's not like on every side. <laughs> so I meant the the holding pattern. Like I I enter on the unprotected side and do maybe um, a parallel entry, and then I turn to intercept the uh, inbound course. By how far can I overshoot the inbound course and still be considered on the protected side? Standard traffic, uh, November 36, Echo 13 mile on runway 18. Yeah, I, I don't have those numbers. Oh, okay. And you are uh, November 91 or Bravo Charlie, right? No, that's Klaus. I'm um, oh, 36 Klaus. Echo. Yeah, 36 Echo, okay. And you are flying the GPS approach? Yeah, the RNF 18. Well, you are much more precise than I was. Yeah, I had my NDB. Yeah, I have my gentle line. Mm, I haven't. <laughs> the, the dark, the dark power of the magenta line. Yeah, I was, I was able to. I was like, I, I rolled out to to west on the co of the course, and then try to you know correct it all the way and just manage to correct it. Maybe how far, how far was it? I corrected it like. Well, still uh, like four miles from the NDB, so that's good. Yeah. And then the inbound course was actually quite all right, and I uh, zoomed in on the dashboard so I cannot see outside because I yeah. would be able to see the runway. <laughs> yeah, I can see it now, but I'll try to ignore it. flew pretty pretty far but at least that gave me time to correct my course okay oh 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 international traffic number 91 about Charlie this is system 152 on the NDP runway 18 approach about to do the procedure turn and head south. Stennis. Okay, so this was also good. I've done how many? Four traffic patterns? November 6, 59, we're ready to check. Yes. All right, clear. Thank you. So four <coughs> traffic patterns pretty much on top of each other. That uh, would be satisfied. The vertical profile was sometimes sketchy and then it was like a direct to the VOR or trying to hold that and then a right turn back on course procedure entry procedure turn uh, rolled out too far try to correct it all the way and actually when I was there when when uh, where Christian is right now That's 
I noticed that I was now on the other side of it. That crossed it right there. Oops. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay, that's better. And before he lands, uh, let me let me uh, say uh, goodbye. Uh, this was a view for departure with uh, four uh, four um, uh, traffic patterns around the Jeremiah Denton, and then off to the Stennis International with uh, the NDB approach. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next week. Bye bye.